tubes versus pens. I will tell you straight away, I do have a very strong preference for one over the other. Which one it is though, I will tell you at the end of the video. Not just because I want you to watch till the end, which you should do anyway, but because I want you to have, you know, the full demonstration with you being quite open to both of those packages. And perhaps by the end of the video, you might agree with me or you might disagree and say, Leila, pff, that's nonsense. Okay, well, either way, you can just leave your ideas and your thoughts in the comments below. For those of you who are new to this channel, hi, I'm Leila and welcome to my art studio. I wanted to do a video like this, pens versus tubes, for a while now, but I didn't have an opportunity until now. You probably remember a few videos back, I did a little swatch and review for the Rubens watercolor paint, which is a set of pens. And now I've got exactly the same 24 color set, but same colors in tubes. So this would be the perfect tutorial to show you and compare the two because you are comparing apples with apples rather than comparing different brands. So the brand is Kwame Watercolor, uh, which is Paul Rubens brand. I will leave all the links under the video so you can check those out for yourself if you want. So let's have a look at what would work better for you. And also I will be doing swatches of this set as well. And then at the end we can compare if there is any difference between colors uh, that come in a pen set or in the tube set. If you would like to see a video on different things that you need to do when you open up your paint for the first time, I do have a video on that as well and I will link that under this video so you can have a look if you're interested. Also throughout the video I'm going to do a checklist so that you guys can keep up with what's going on. Now the point number one, and I hear this all the time when people say that pens are more expensive than tubes. If you actually look at the price, you might be right because you'd get so many grams in the pens and then each tube, some brands would sell them by tube, this one sort of comes as a set, you will see that the price for the tube will be a little bit cheaper. But when you buy paint in pens, it's already dry. So you're actually getting more paint for your money than you do in the tubes. So the way you look at it, that price difference doesn't really play in. Even though from the first glance, you might think that this is actually more expensive. But there is a catch to that, and I'll get to that a little bit later in the video. The tubes usually do come in different sizes. You can get larger ones, smaller ones, even tiny little ones like, you know, just five milligrams. And of course, the larger ones would be costing more and the smaller ones would be costing less. And the pens usually come in two uh, different sizes, full pens and half pens. All brands are different, but many brands actually add more binder to the paint when they fill up their pens just to make it a little bit easier to rewet. It can be a little bit problematic sometimes because when you get your tube watercolor, all you need to do is just squeeze it and it's ready to go. You can pick up as much of the paint as you want. When you have your paint, this is the same color, permanent rose here, and you want to pick up from the pen, you actually need to apply a little bit of water or spray it with water out of a spray bottle. So here, now let's compare. So if I pick up a little bit of this pink from the permanent rose and I've applied some water in there, this is the intensity that I can get. If I am picking up a little bit of paint from the tube, then this is the intensity I get. See how much deeper and denser the color is. You might think it's a good thing, but it could be problematic, especially for beginners, because watercolor, you never really paint it like this. This is not a way to paint with watercolor. It's way too thick. It will take a very long time to dry, and it will never be properly dry. It will always stay sticky, just like your uh, pens of watercolor. So what you need to do is you always need to add water. It is in the name water color. It's like colored water. So make sure that you always add a lot of water. Now, if you are a beginner or you are transitioning from acrylics, from gouache, 
poster paint, some other medium oils to watercolor, you might also find it problematic. You would be picking up more paint than you want at a time. So using something like pens can be easier in that regard. But if you are trying to create a large wash of color, you might struggle with watercolor from the pens because it's much harder to pick up a lot of paint straight away. So if I want to create a large wash, all I need to do with a tube is squirt a little bit into a little dish and actually apply a whole bunch of water. Now I have a lot of free flowing color here and if I want to create a nice large wash, I don't need to be going back and premixing it again and again and again. I will constantly be getting the same consistency, the same darkness and lightness of the color. Um, if you would like to see how to create a really beautiful flat color washes, I have a video for that too, so make sure you watch that as well. I will leave all the links under the video so you can go and check everything out. If you um, enjoy this kind of content and you might like to see more uh, follow along type of videos, long, very relaxing videos where I take you through the whole process of drawing or painting something from the beginning till the end, you would be able to find this kind of content on my Patreon page. Uh, it's not very expensive. Uh, and you just pay a monthly fee. I think now you can even register there for free. And there are, depending on the tier that you choose, uh, there are giveaways and lots of other things, including critique videos and some other stuff that you guys might find very helpful. So I really hope to see you there. And this channel will really appreciate your help. Well, your brain will really appreciate all the extra videos and tutorials. So it's a win-win, guys. Also, if, for example, I'm work working with a larger scale artwork, I would want to use a larger brush. And you can see how uncomfortable it will be for me to go in and try and fit this in here. This is not even a super large brush. Some brushes are even larger. So doing something like this can be much more problematic than just putting my brush in here, soaking everything up and getting a really, really lovely, lovely layer of paint. You see how much color I've got there? It's really great. If I'm working on something large, would I go for the tubes? Yeah, it's much more comfortable. But now we come to another point. This other point is also quite important, um, especially for those of you who are quite um, OCD, shall we put it like that? <laughs> If you are working with pens, you will see that they're constantly getting muddied up because you mix colors, you want to pick up a color on the brush that has another color and you cross contaminate them. When you are working with a tube, you usually use a palette and you just squeeze a little bit out and then you've got very pure, clean color that you haven't been into with other colors. That's another point, which I think for some people more valuable than others. I don't really care and I'm absolutely fine cleaning the palette up, but for some people it, it, it is really frustrating. Another thing to remember is that when you get pants, this is all you've got. It can be a beautiful layout. A lot of the times you can buy these sets that already have a little palette, you know, like this whole Ruben set, for example, it has a lovely mixing palette here and all the colors are arranged nicely and neatly and you see them all in front of you. When you do get something like this, you have to have a palette, either something like this, you know, that, that you saw here, or something like this, where you can squeeze all the different colors and then keep all this area for mixing and stuff like this, which does mean that you need to buy a separate palette. But there is a big advantage for this as well. When you buy this set, this is pretty much all you have. So if I want to go painting outdoors and I only want to use, I don't know, six colors, this is what I'll have to take with me. Some palettes are larger, maybe more uncomfortable. If I get tubes of paint that I might like to use for my outdoor palette, I can always set up 
a little like a little tin and just squeeze out a little bit of of paint like the set that i have created to take with me this is very diy it's a, a box from the chocolate set with little shells that are filled in with paint that i take with me when i go traveling and i want to paint on the spot it's much lighter much smaller so really you can make so many different palettes if you have paint in tubes and of course you can create as many palettes as you would like Okay, so as I promised, now I can give you my verdict on what I think is definitely, definitely a go-to for me uh, versus something that I don't fancy as much. So, I personally almost always go for tubes, okay? Now, hear me out. You might, as I said, there are lots of different points, it might not work for you. Or whatever but what I do and why I personally prefer using tubes is that you have so much more versatility a lot of artists do go for tubes because they sort of feel that it's much cheaper than the tubs but I already explained that you know it is it does dry out here so you actually get the quantity of this even though it dries out it actually is more if you were to rewet it to, to rewet it to the state of the actual tubes. So that's not much of an issue. What I do like about the tubes is the versatility that they offer you. Now, I personally have a palette that I use. And this palette is pretty much made up from paint in tubes being squeezed into these little pens. I know sometimes, you know, you hear things like, yes, but if you squeeze the paint in, it will crack, this will happen, that will happen. If you continuously using it, and if you're not filling your little tubs to the top, but just, you know, having just a little bit of paint there, none of this really happens. And if it happens, it doesn't really affect the actual painting process. At least for me, it doesn't. And so I feel like with the tube, I get so much more, okay? I can create palettes. I can work fresh like you saw when I needed to, you know, mix up a lot of uh, watercolor. Um, I can do that easily with pens. And I can create lots of different palettes. So my personal preference is tubes. But if you are a total beginner, you might like to have a convenience of a palette. So you might like to buy something that's already set. And when you use up that paint, you might want to get a refill, like in this situation. I think you guys also know that I teach art classes as well. So for my students, I also have little boxes with little pens that I refill. So at some stage, all of these were bought as little sort of either empty little pens or pens filled up with paint. They were used up. But now all I do is I just refill the little pots. I just feel that it's so much easier for students to do this, even though, uh, you know, as I said, sometimes they get a little bit, you know, annoyed with having to clean the paint a little bit. Like you can see here, this one's, but you know, got a bit of darker color on it. And please, please um, figure out what works best for you. Again, all the info about this paint, I will leave under the video. And here are the paint swatches so you can see them. It's a lovely paint. It's a more of a student grade paint. So if you're a beginner, this would be a great paint for you to start with. So yeah, make sure to check out all the links under the video. I'll link some other videos as well if you want to check those out. The ones that I think you might guys like to have a look at that would be related to this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what your final verdict is, whether it is pens or tubes, you know, what my one is now. I want to say a big, big thank you to my wonderful, wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel. Remember to watch more videos that are popping up uh, probably about now. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon.